Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today's video is actually a little bit different to normal. I'm going to be talking to you from the perspective of an owner of a C63 AMG. So I've owned this car now for a few months and I've actually owned an estate version of the same car a few years ago. So I think I'm a quite knowledgeable owner of what it's like to actually live with this car. So this video is going to be about living with a C63 AMG, which is like when I was trying to choose what car to buy and whether this is the right thing for me, I was always looking for videos like this online. So hopefully this can be of use to people out there who are kind of in the market for looking for a car like this. Or if you just really like cars, I'm going to talk to you about the specs, the noise. I'm going to do some drive-by shots and downshifts. So it's a pretty cool video and it's a bit more in-depth about this car. So this is the W204 C63 AMG, which ran from 2008 to 2014 with the 6.2 litre naturally aspirated V8 engine. Now the new 63 is a 4 litre twin turbo. All engines are getting smaller, they're getting turbocharged. In my opinion, that sucks. I absolutely love massive, monstrous V8 NASCAR style cars. So this is the dream car for me. So this is a 2012 C63 coupe. So it's just got the two front doors. There's a saloon four door version and the massive estate wagon, which is five door. Um, I've actually owned one of the estates before for throwing my bikes in the back and it was pretty insane. But this is for me more of like, my attempt to have a sports car like i've got the two-door one so i don't use it too much for biking it's just kind of like i enjoy it for a car not as a tool an everyday vehicle so all of the c63s are very similar same chassis really similar engine there's the standard version model which is 457 horsepower the performance pack is 487 horsepower this is a performance pack the 507 edition, 507 horsepower, and the Black Series, I think, is 514 or 517 horsepower. So there's a few different tunes on the engine. The Performance Pack, the Edition 507, and the Black Series all have forged internals, which is of benefit. The engine's going to have probably a longer lifespan. If you want to supercharge the engine, it can take the power. So ahead of 2011, this car underwent a facelift. So any models newer than 2011 have got slightly different features. So the grille's different. You can buy an aftermarket grille if you get an older version, but it's got the one big line through it instead of two. I think it looks more aggressive. The headlights changed. Um, the interior became different. It's got real good sat nav and everything built in in a different way. And some different features like launch control, which we'll go over soon. So I've had some of the chrome parts of this car wrapped black, like the grille, and I think it looks a lot more fierce like that. But that's quite a cheap modification. Like If you buy it stock, that's something you can change easily and make it look real cool. The car will either come with 18-inch Mercedes alloys or 19-inch ones. These are the 19s, and if we have a look at them, they're like full 19-inch matte black alloy, but this silver kind of coating around the edge, which for a lot of people, I think would look quite classy, and like it does make sense for this car, but I definitely want to make the wheels black, and I've been looking at new, like full black forged alloys for this, just to make it look more aggressive. So that's something I'm interested in, but I think this car stock off the production line, if you're going to buy it, is like incredible and completely ready to go. But because I've owned one before, I've always had these ideas of some little modifications and changes that I want to make. This has got a full panoramic glass roof, so sunroof at the front, the rear section of the roof is glass, and obviously the rear window. So from front to back, it's black glass all the way across, and actually looks insane. Like Having a sunroof is, I think, a must because if you're going to go through tunnels, like between walls, having the roof open gives so much more noise coming into the car. Because obviously, as a driver, you're sat in front of the exhausts, and if you want to really experience the noise, it helps to have the sunroof open. It's just another little thing I've noticed. To make this car different to the standard W204 C Class, it's got wider arches at the front, which from certain angles, when you look at it, it looks insane. And these, like, humps on the bonnet it actually makes it quite difficult to see over when you're parking but the, the front of this car is so aggressive often you get cars with big exhaust pipes at the rear but the front of this I think sets it off just as well as the four massive exhausts which we'll look at now so four AMG tailpipes which is where the absolute noise of thunder from hell comes from and the diffuser in between just the plastic diffuser looks quite nice but you can get these insane carbon diffusers with massive fins which make it look more like a like DTM proper track car. So you kind of seen around the outside of the car with a few detailed shots but the real experience is driving this thing so that's what we'll go to now and I'll talk to you about sort of some numbers, figures and just an idea of what it costs to run this car. In 
inside the car is actually like a really just nice environment to be in. It's not like the race car that you hear come in or you see from the outside. Like it's just classic Mercedes quality and like amazing leather seats with huge bolsters. It's like such a nice driving experience really, but then when you put your foot down, you just... You get all that there and you remember you're actually in what is a race car. There's quite a price range for C63s. Like they're a few years old now, this model. They finished in 2014, so you're not going to pick up a brand new one. Um, and depending on mileage, age and kind of condition, you can pick them up from as low as like £18,000 all the way up to black series models which are over £100,000. So there's a massive range of prices for these cars and depending on whether you want a low mileage model, a newer version, kind of spec wise it doesn't change much like Audis and cars like that there is a massive list of different spec options but the only real optional extras to look out for are Harman Kardon sound system which this one doesn't have uh, reversing camera 19 inch alloys they all might add a bit of money and can justify a higher price and performance pack obviously with the forged internals red brake calipers uprated brakes things like that so but generally kind of the price is justified with these cars from like 18,000 up you're paying more for lower mileage and a newer model so it's not much to look out for really just color things like that whatever takes your fancy one optional extra which does come from the factory but can be done aftermarket which I would say completely transforms this car and is a must-have is a limited slip diff so you can buy them from companies like Quaife aftermarket and get them fitted for about £1,500 but I think as a factory option they are over £3,000 so not many models actually have the limited slip diff but if you find one with an LSD it's well worth considering and probably that would sway your decision because it's like driving a completely different car. In terms of things like fuel consumption this car is like really bad on fuel. I've done since I reset the clock, 2,000 miles in this and averaged 13 miles to the gallon and that's always using Shell high octane fuel. So it is very bad on fuel and you could get as low as 10 miles to the gallon. On the motorway, you could look at sort of 20, 23 at the best, but if you're going to be doing long journeys and long miles with, with this car as a workhorse, it's probably going to cost you so much in fuel. So that's worth considering. It's really expensive to run on fuel. One of the reasons you do use so much fuel is because every time you come across a tunnel like this... You can get quite insane noise, which is it like, it never ceases to amaze me, the noise that comes from this car. It's like pure V8 thunder, the definition of V8 power. So, fuel economy is quite a problem, but that's to be expected with a high-powered V8 car. Other things worth considering are the tax, it's in the highest possible tax bracket, so it's £505 a year, I think, to tax, which spread out over a year, you can justify, but it's obviously another expense that has to be considered tyres they're not run flats like you'd get on some BMWs and cars like that so they're standard tyres and on these the 19s for good quality Continentals or Michelins you're looking at about £240 a tyre and for the front about £160, £150 a tyre so a full set of tyres is going to cost you in the region of £800. The fronts you're going to not have to change but the rears you will have to change like probably every 5,000 miles if you're driving the car quite hard or maybe you get more out of them but from what I've read on forums and things 5,000 miles is a good run on the rear tyres on this car so that's worth considering about 500 pounds to replace the rears. With traction control turned on normally like the car is, is super clever like you're not the back end's not going to come flying out in the wet in the rain even in the ice so you can use this car all year round it doesn't need taking off the road or anything ridiculous like that. You've got sport traction mode which is kind of an in-between where the rear end can brake traction which is pretty cool and then with traction control completely completely off this car is a complete and utter like murderer it is an animal and if it's wet on the roads and you've got traction off you do actually have to be so careful or a professional driver because with all that power going to the rear wheels especially with a limited slip diff it breaks traction it's just insane and quite cool as deer here <laughs> this is pretty cool uh, yeah so with traction off beware especially in the winter but summer um, definitely you can drive this car super hard and just as a, as a proper race car but from Mercedes you're going to have an A service and a B service the B is the more expensive one like spark plugs things like that a minor service which is like basically an oil change I was quoted close to 600 pounds from Mercedes because the car does take a lot of engine oil and obviously their labor is more expensive than a lot of car garages however you do want the Mercedes-Benz stamp you want to look for a car with full Mercedes-Benz service history 
but a cheap way of maintaining that would be to go to a third party website, buy the engine oil and the oil filter that Mercedes recommend yourself, and then you're just paying the dealership for labour, and you're gonna save yourself hundreds of pounds because they charge a lot per litre of oil. If you're buying it for yourself, you might get the oil for about 100 pounds. So the car has a few different modes. Comfort, which is just fully automatic, changes gear at low rev range, you're not gonna get real loud downshift, so it's more understated. Sport, which speeds things up a bit. Sport Plus, and manual. Manual, you're completely in control on the paddles, you can hit the rev limiter without changing up, and it changes gear in 0.1 seconds. And then the final setting, which this car has, which is amazing, is race start. So, you put it in sport traction, flick it to race start, Right paddle to confirm, then you're ready to go. So day to day, living with this car, driving this car, it's actually really practical. If you're new to my channel, I'm a professional mountain bike rider, that's what my YouTube channel is. So I can fit my mountain bike in here if I want to. So it, you can like use it every day, shopping, the whole lot is great. Um, in terms of like parking it, it's not as wide as a Lamborghini or anything ridiculous like that. So you can park it fine, your wife can take it to the shops. It's a perfectly usable, practical car, which is amazing. And what Mercedes have done so well is they've put an insane engine in a car which is just completely 100% practical. As the title says, living with this car is amazing. It's not a complete head turner, it's not bright red, it's super understated, which I love. Um, a lot of people even debadge them, so it's just fits in perfectly but when you do want to go for it it's insanely fast so I absolutely love living with this C63 MG I'm gonna keep it for a long time it is my dream car and I'm so happy I get to drive it every day so I wouldn't recommend it anymore I haven't driven BMW M3s Audi RS4s they're all on the same playing field but for me this car absolutely ticks every box it's amazing I hope you enjoyed today's video if you've got any comments about my experiences or any more detailed questions let me know in the comments if you want to subscribe to my channel click here but yeah, you're all absolute legends. See you in the next video, which will probably be about mountain biking, not this car. But I thought it'd be a benefit to some people learning a bit more and a bit more information. Cheers, guys.